What if I told you, by only using this single shadow and knowing the time of day, you'd be able to deduct where in the world it is? Well, that is now possible as of this month. Meet Galen, an engineer and part of the investigative tech team at Bellingcat, and Gabor, a freelance open source researcher who has worked with Bellingcat and the Washington Post, among others. Thanks to these two, this is now possible. I'm gonna do a quick demo on how this tool works and have a quick interview with them at the end. All right, I'm gonna use this live stream right here as an example of how we can use shadows in a photo or video if you know the time. Live streams are a good example of this because because you can always know the time of a live stream if they have the timestamp or if it's live and you know your time right now. So basically, this is the current live stream I'm watching right now, but unfortunately there's overcast. So I'll use an example of a previous screenshot I have of this live stream that we worked on together. All right, so as you can see here, this is a live stream taken on May 3rd. This was about three weeks ago now, right when they kind of started experimenting and working this out. So basically you only really need three things. You need the time. So we have May 3rd, 1117 local time. Then we also need to have the object's height and the length of the shadow. And it doesn't mean you actually have to have the actual height of the object. This is not like centimeters or feet. In this portion here, we are using pixels. So basically here, if I do this, we can see that the height here is 96 pixels. And if we do it here, we can see that it goes to 118 width. So we have the shadow at 118 pixels wide, and we have the height at 96 pixels. This is the UI here. We can see that the object height, we can type in 96, and the shadow length, we'll give it 118. And then we can click May 3rd, 2024. And this was at 11, 17, 41 seconds on local time. And so now I have pretty much anything in this UI yellow line is where the object height would make sense for the shadow length to be that equivalent. So we can see maybe we're in Canada, maybe we're in Russia. I'm going to put in the UTC now for South Africa time, assuming it's South Africa because of its geography. And this will give me more of a circular thing that's kind of more aesthetic. I like this more. And then according to the shadow length and object height at this time of day on May 3rd, we can assume we're going to be somewhere in this yellow line right here. If you're less confident about the time, if you don't have a direct live stream or metadata or anything like that to give you the exact time and you're kind of going off an estimate that's where these other lines make sense so if you're less confident maybe you could be in the purple and it kind of goes down based off how confident you are but knowing the exact time is helpful in this live stream scenario we know that we're going to be somewhere in this yellow sliver right here in north cape it could be more east here i think but it would be more green you would maybe have more hills and things like that so i don't think it's going to be down south so then you know you're going to be in north cape which given the world knowing you're going to be in that specific yellow line versus anywhere else because obviously at that time the sun wasn't up anywhere over here and it doesn't look like it's going to be in Senegal or Scotland or Norway. But like anything in geolocation, context is crucial. And you can start scanning North Cape on satellite for bodies of water that makes sense and things like that. And then using that context, we already found this by the way, this isn't live demo. If you guys want me to do a live demo, I can. But you can just go ahead and like start scanning. We know in the live stream that there is a road right here and we have a house right here. We have a, like a white water tank right there. So we know we're going to be like next to this road right here, the body of water. There's not that many bodies of water. So see, we have the road right there. There's no house. So that doesn't really make sense. It's also off a main road, maybe be less likely. And eventually, like I said, we already found this over here. We have more of this like kind of infrastructure with houses and stuff. And we can see we have a body of water here. And we also have a body of water here. We also have a house here and we can see that this house lines up. We also have, you can see right here where my cursor is, that is a white water tank. And this is the road perpendicular. This will be a better visual for you guys actually. So this is where the camera was. This orange thing is where the end of the pond kind of stops. The purple is the one kilometer away, that hill line in the distance. Blue is the water tank and the red is the house. But as you can see here, this dot right here, this is a pin of the cords of the live stream. And as we can see here, it's literally right within where the yellow border is. And I think this is just a really cool new tool that if you're given the right information is extremely helpful to help narrow down. But yeah, I have a quick interview with the two people that spearheaded this project. So maybe you guys can learn more about this tool and hopefully apply it to your own research or geolocation on your own one day. So let's talk to them. So basically, chronolocation using the sun is quite common in a lot of open source geolocations research because the idea is if you know it's a, your video is taken at a certain place, like let's say down here in Amsterdam, at a certain time of day, say for example today around 9.05, 9.06, so if you're in a location but you can see the length, then you can also figure out the time. For example, if you're in Amsterdam at this point and your video is an object of height 1 with a shadow length of 2.1, then you can play around in sun calc and you can see that, hey, this is too late. This 
shadow length, which you can see here, is too short. When you get back, the shadow length gets to 210. So you know you can figure out the time of day the video was taken, which is the most common use. On the other hand, you can also figure out if you know the time and the location, then you can see, for example, okay, the shadow is to the west. So that means the house is also to the west. So that way you can try to help orient it. But I thought, okay, what if we take this one step further? If you know the shadow and you know the time, then theoretically you should be able to figure out the location as well. Because every single location has a slightly different shadow at the same time. So if you're in Amsterdam, then here the shadow length at 857 is 218. If you go a little bit to the east, you see that now it's really 215. So if you're precise enough with the shadow, then you can figure out that it has to be in, over in Amsterdam instead of over east in Flevoland. The issue is though, many different locations on the earth at the same time have the same shadow lengths. Depending on where you are, it could be here or it could be in any number of other locations. But the figure is figuring out which locations there are. So I come up with the idea, what if there's a tool that shows where for a certain time of day, all the locations in the world with a certain shadow length. So let's say all the locations in the world or at 9 a.m. there's a shadow length of 210 meters. You may not know the exact location yet, but you know that it has to be one of these locations in the earth. So it helps narrow it down massively already, sometimes even enough to find the location maybe almost instantly. So I came around to the Bellica community and you know, asked around, this is my idea, is there anyone who can automate this idea and create a tool for it that's easy to use for people who want to figure out how this works and use this method themselves? Yeah, definitely. So I'm Galen okay. from Bellingcat and I spend a lot of time on our social media looking out, keeping an eye out for interesting ideas. Because yeah, if you think about the kind of physics of it, if you shine a light on a surface and put something directly under that light, like a stick under the sun, if it's directly beneath it, it won't cast any shadow. But if you go in any direction, at any given time, there's a massive circle on the surface of the Earth of points where you have a shadow of a particular length for a certain object height. So with Gabor's suggestion, I got to working on some of the code and putting together a tool that will let you put in the length of a shadow and get a bunch of locations where that shadow could be or where that picture could be taken. This is the kind of simple Google Collab UI, put in your object height, your shadow length, and then give a date and time when that image or that video was taken. We'll start off with assuming that that time is in UTC, uh, that's like universal time or Greenwich Mean Time, and we can just hit run, then after just a couple of seconds it spits back this bunch of points on the Earth's surface that show us exactly where a shadow length three, and that three can be in any unit, it doesn't matter, all we really care about is that ratio. Yeah, I mean in theory it's like, hopefully you can tell the difference between like China and South Africa. This like really helps you narrow down, like pushes you in the right direction. I had an example earlier, a couple weeks ago, or like maybe last week, where I was just like for fun trying to find a CCTV camera in Russia, just like from that Twitter account that posts unsecure CCTV and it said like unknown location. I found the actual live stream and there was a car that drove by and I used the car and its shadow and using the like the ratio of the shadow to the car, it like made its ring like somewhat near St. Petersburg, which allowed me to like scan St. Petersburg when I was like scanning like East near like Chelyabinsk at first. Things like that saved me who knows how many hours so there it's cool yeah, that there's like actually a use case yeah and so exactly. this Which... ring right here pretty much the the yellow light ring is where it's closest or where it's most likely to be correct yeah exactly so all these points in yellow here are the places where it's most likely to be and then you can see it kind of tails off and then the bits in white are where the sun's not up yet so it's definitely not in those locations That's, and i think yeah. maybe it's worth just showing as well that sometimes if you've got a photograph it'll have metadata that'll give you a time but that time's not always going to be in utc it's not always going to be in that greenwich mean time typically like you know if you're taking a picture on your phone that metadata will be the local time of wherever it was that you took that picture. So we've also got that option that lets you kind of do exactly the same thing, but using the kind of local time. So you see this gives far more points. Mm -hmm. So this is 9 a.m. Again, depending on the kind of constraints of your problem. So for instance, if, if we were looking at something that was in China, this still gives you a pretty good short list of location. I love finding like tools like this. It like reopens like your imagination on like how to find something. It's just another tool to add to the collection that you can always rely on. It's always there for like the specific use case where you need it. I'm surprised no one's done this before because it seems kind of like not obvious, but like, like, ah, oh, this makes so much sense in hindsight. Have people used this before? It's just been manual. I think a lot of ways we're kind of used to doing things in a certain way. Most of the things you see that are new that people come up with are actually very simple, but just yeah. you need to, someone to come up with it once and then see it. And then you're like, oh, right, we can do that. I think this is one of those cases as well. Yeah, yeah I totally agree. I think that's one of the things that we do a fair amount with the Bellingcat community is trying to find, you know, simple tools that can make a big difference to either investigations 
locations or geolocation. It's not the most beautiful interface, but it is functional and easy. No, I love it. You have like features on like ways you can expand to make this more accurate. So this is like something that came into fruition within the past like four or five weeks. So there's a laundry list of to-do items. Uh, one of the big ones is to give people a way of saying like, how sure are you about the shadow length? Make it so that that band becomes more meaningful. Another that I'm pretty certain we've got a contributor working is the ability to add the kind of angle to the sun directly. And you might think like, why would you want to do that? But if say you've got a vertical wall that has a shadow cast on it, often that shadow, if you put a protractor on it and measure the angle, that will give you the direct angle to the sun. No need to worry about like object height and shadow length. So mm. there's lots of avenues that we can kind of develop this. And... Anything else you want to like, um, add? Yeah, I think it'd be good to shout out to the Bellingcat community because that's where these tools come from. Like this tool didn't exist a few weeks ago before Gabor came into our community and asked that question. You know, there's a bunch of tools that we're working on developing, a bunch of ideas that we have. It goes both ways. We're always looking to connect ideas with developers who are willing to put some time in and build these kind of tools. It just takes a simple idea to come up with something that can be really effective. So not just for geolocations, but for any kind of investigations. That's Bellingcat's remit. Awesome. If you guys enjoyed this, don't forget to like, subscribe, or don't. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.